Related Rates Examples Objectives. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to solve more challenging related rate problems. All right, example one, water pours into a fish tank at the rate of three feet cubed per minute. How fast is the water level, H, rising if the base of the tank is a rectangle of dimensions two by three feet? All right, so the image has already been drawn out for us. Here's the fish tank, and the base, we're told, has dimensions two feet by three feet. And we're given that water pours into the fish tank at a rate of three feet cubed per minute. So what we've been given here is we've been given dv dt. So we've been given the rate of change of the volume. And even though we weren't told the word volume, we would have to recognize that based on the units. So feet cubed dv dt per minute. So the rate of change is three feet cubed per minute. And we want to know how fast the water level, H, is rising. So we want dH dt, the rate of change, how fast is the water level rising. So this is what we're interested in finding. So this is going to form a rectangular prism. And the area of a rectangular, or the volume of a rectangular prism is length times width times height. So if we call L3 and then the width 2, the length and the width are not changing because the base is always 3 by 2. So this becomes 3 times 2 times h. So the volume can be represented by 6h. So now I want to take the derivative with respect to time of both sides because the volume and the height are both changing. So d dt of v and then d dt of 6h gives me the relationship that the rate of change of volume with respect to time is 6 times the rate of change of the height with respect to time. So using implicit differentiation. And I was given that the volume is 3 feet cubed per minute, or the rate of change of the volume. So 3 can be input in for dv dt. And that has to equal 6 dh dt. So now if I want to solve for dh dt, I divide both sides by 6. So the 6s will cancel. This reduces to 1 over 2. So dh dt is 1 over 2. And my units, this is just one part of my three-dimensional volume. So my units have to be in feet per minute. So dh dt is 1 half feet per minute. All right, in example two, we're going to go over the classic ladder problem, which is the typical example to go over first in a related rate section. But I do think it actually has quite a bit of pieces of information to it, so I would consider it a more challenging example. What we have is a 13-foot ladder that's leaning against a wall. The bottom of the ladder is 5 feet from the wall at time t equals 0, and the bottom slides away from the wall at a rate of three feet per second. Find the velocity of the top of the ladder at time t equals two seconds. So we have a 13 foot ladder leaning against a wall. So this right here is gonna represent our ladder and this vertical line, this vertical part to the triangle is gonna represent the wall. So here I'm gonna go ahead and call this ladder z. And the length of z is a constant 13 feet. So we don't have a ladder that slides um, in length. The ladder's length is always 13 feet. And so let's go ahead and call this x and this y. So y is going to be where the wall would be, and z is the ladder. So we're told that the bottom of the ladder is 5 feet from the wall. So again, this vertical line represents the wall. So the base of the ladder x is 5 feet. And this is when time equals 0. So at time 0, I have this 13-foot ladder. Let's say it's leaning up against a window. And the base of the ladder is exactly 5 feet from the wall. And what's happening is, imagine that someone's pulling the base of the ladder away from the wall. So the ladder is moving in this direction, or the base, I should say, is moving in this direction to the right and sliding away from the wall at a rate of three feet per second. So if we call this distance x, then 
the rate of change of x, dx dt, is 3 feet per second. So that's what I have been given. So I'm sort of drawing all my givens on the graph. So what I'm interested in finding is the velocity of the top of the ladder at time t equals 2 seconds. And here's where I think it is a little bit of a complicated question, is because we're looking for the top of the ladders here. We're looking for how fast the top of the ladder is sliding down. So essentially, we're looking for dy dt, so the rate of change of y. So y meaning the height from the top of the ladder to the base of the floor. That's the distance that I called y. So I would be looking for, I'm in search of dy dt. That's what I want but specifically when time is two seconds. So not at this starting point, so not at time zero where the ladder's just resting against the wall that's 13 feet long and it, the base is five feet from the wall. I wanna know what's happening two seconds later. And a lot of students are gonna think, well, if I pull the bottom at a rate of three feet per second, well then the top is gonna be moving at the same rate of change, but that's not the case. And what I want you to think about is if you are, if you really think about pulling a ladder, so you might be sort of hesitant to pull the ladder because when you start to pull it, you know that at some point it's gonna fall down and hit the ground really fast. So dy dt is actually going to have a rate of change that is going to increase. So the rate of change is going to have an increasing rate of change. It's going to slap and hit the ground as you continue to pull the base of the ladder away from the wall. So they're actually not the same, and that's what a lot of students tend to go to, is that these are the same, but we're relating to different rates. So we want to know how fast the velocity of the top of the ladder is moving um, at t equals two seconds. But our diagram, that's when t equals zero. So that's why I have this second triangle drawn here, because what I have to do is I have to think about what's going on at t equals two seconds. Well, the ladder is not changing, so z is still going to be 13 feet. That's the same. But after two seconds has passed, if I'm pulling the ladder, they started out as five feet from the wall, and I'm pulling it away at a rate of three feet every one second. Well, if the original distance was five feet from the wall, after one more second, it would be eight feet from the wall. After another second, we're going to add three more to that, so it would be 11 feet from the wall. So my new x is going to have to be 11 feet. But my dx dt is the same. So the rate of change, how fast I'm pulling it, is a constant dx dt is still 3 feet per second. So now I have to think about, well, what's the y value here? So I'm still interested in finding dy dt at this moment in time when x is 11 feet, z is still 13 feet, and eventually I'm going to need to find y, but we'll get to that. So this forms a right triangle. Again, I want to find dy dt at this moment in time. So I'm dealing with these numbers, 11, 13, and eventually I'm going to have to solve for y. But for now, I want to relate the variables. So x, y, and z are related by the Pythagorean theorem. So x squared plus y squared equals z squared. Now, if possible, I want to plug in any constants, things that aren't changing. And we've said that no matter what, the length of the ladder is 13 feet. But x and y are changing. The rate of change of the height of the ladder and the distance from the ladder, the base of the ladder to the wall, are changing. So I can plug in uh, 13 for z. So this would be 13 squared, so 169. So now I have to take the derivative of both sides with respect to time. So d dt of x squared plus y squared, so the whole left side, and then d dt of 169. So the right side, the derivative of a constant is 0. The left side would be 2x dx dt plus 2y dy dt using implicit differentiation. And so now I'm solving for, let's change colors here, I'm solving for dy dt. So in order to find dy dt, I'm going to have to plug something in for y, for dx dt, and for x. But I have quantities for x and dx dt. 
So 2 times my x value at 2 seconds is 11. So 2 times 11 dx dt is 3 plus 2 times. So now here's where I have to solve for y. So to solve for y, I have to use the Pythagorean theorem. So specifically, when time is 2, the Pythagorean theorem gives me x squared, so 11 squared plus y squared equals 13 squared. So 11 squared is 121 plus y squared equals 169. So y squared is going to be, if I subtract 121 from 169, it's going to be 48. So y is going to be the square root of 48. So we'll go ahead and leave it um, for now as the square root of 48. So that's my value for y. Of course, it would be plus or minus, but I need it to be the positive version. It's a distance. So let's go ahead and plug the square root of 48 in right here for y. And then dy dt equals 0. So, oops, that's an x. That should be a t. So dy dt. So I'm solving for dy dt. So that means I'm going to need to subtract this quantity, 2 times 11 times 3. So that's 6 times 11. That's 66. So I'm going to have 2 times the square root of 48 dy dt is going to have to equal negative 66. And then I'll have to divide by 2 times the square root of 48 if I want to get rid of that quantity to isolate dy dt. So dy dt, without simplifying anything, is negative 66 over 2 times the square root of 48. So if we were to simplify this, and I'm not going to rationalize um, the denominator, this is 33 over 8 radical 3. And of course I could rationalize, but I'm not going to do that for now. I'm going to leave my answer like this and be sure to include, oops, I forgot the negative, be sure to include my units. So my units would be the same as dx dt, feet per second. So feet per second. And we need to ask ourselves, why is this quantity negative? Well, the this y value here that represents the top of the height of the ladder to the floor, this um, distance is getting smaller because the ladder is coming down to hit the ground. So that's why this is a negative quantity. So this is considered to be where you intro um, related rates. This type of problem is considered to be uh, a basic problem, but I do think it is a little bit complicated because we do have to think about what's going on at two seconds, whereas they give you um, introductory information when time equals zero seconds. All right, example three. Water pours into a conical tank of radius four feet and height ten feet at a rate of ten feet cubed per minute. Part A. When the water level is at five feet, how fast is the water level rising? All right, this is definitely an advanced problem. So we have water that's pouring into a conical tank. So here's the image, the pink portion, uh, the bigger pink portion, that's the cone that we're pouring water into. So what I want you to imagine is if you've ever gone to the fair and you've gone up to the little sparklets drinking station and the cups are like snow cones. So that's what's happening here is we kind of have a snow cone cup and we're pouring water into it. And the cup itself has a radius four feet. So the radius of the actual cup is four feet and the height is ten feet. So that's given right here. The height of the actual cup is 10 feet. And the rate at which the water is pouring in. So water pours into this conical tank with these dimensions at the rate of 10 feet cubed per minute. So let's write down what we've been given. We've been given dv dt. And that is apparent in the units. 10 feet cubed, so the rate of change of a volume with respect to time. So 10 feet cubed per minute. In part A, we're asked, when the water level is at 5 feet, how fast is the water level rising? So this blue portion here represents the water. So the height of the water is a variable. It's changing. So we have to label it with H. And then we have a radius of the water that's changing, so we have to label that with R. So where students get confused here is the fact that there's a fixed height, that's the height of the actual cup or the cone, that's 10, and a fixed radius of the cone, that's 4. 
but it's almost like we have two cones because the shape that the water takes on when poured into a cone is also a cone. So the height of the cone of water is changing, and that's h, and then the radius of the cone of water is r, and that's changing as well as the water is pouring into this cup. So when the water level is at 5 feet, so that meaning this h, when this h is 5 feet, how fast is the water level rising? So at that one moment in time, when the height of the water is 5 feet, how fast is the water level rising? So I'm looking for, here's what I want. I want dh dt when, and I'm going to start to use this notation, when the height of the water is at 5 feet. So I want dh dt when h is 5 given that the water pouring in is 10 feet cubed per minute. That's the rate that the water is pouring in. All right, so now we have to relate the variables. So I want to relate r and h. Those are the two quantities that I'm considering. Now I am given this extra piece of information, this 4 and 10, and we'll see how that comes into play in a second. But right now I want to relate the variables. So the variables are v and h, the volume of a cone, and I'm thinking about the volume of the water part in the cone. The volume of a cone is 1 third pi r squared h. Now, the volume is changing. I cannot replace v. The height of the water is definitely changing, so I can't replace h with a number. And r r is changing as well if the if the height of the water is rising then this radius here of the water this blue portion this radius would be getting bigger as this cone continues to fill up to the top so i have v r and h that are all changing so i can't substitute any number in to replace them now at this point if you're copying it down as i'm writing i don't want you to copy down this next part at this point, if you don't do the necessary substitution that we're going to do in a second, if you just jump straight to taking the derivative of both sides. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what would happen, but I don't want you to write this down because this is not the correct method. I would take ddt of both sides. So ddt of pi r squared h. Now the left side is fine. You'd get dv dt. But the right side, whoops, I lost the one third. I could consider 1 third pi r squared one function and h another function, and I'd have to use the product rule. So I'd have to say 1 third pi r squared, so the first function, the derivative of h is dh dt, plus the second function, h, times the derivative of the first, the derivative of 1 third pi r squared would be 2 thirds pi r dr dt. So here's the problem. We would, we're solving for dh dt, we want this quantity. So if I want this quantity, I have to substitute in something for dv dt, no problem, I have that quantity. I have to substitute something in for r. Do I have r? So let's pause and think about that. dh dt is what I'm solving for. h, I have h, h is five. I need r again, and I need dr dt. So r, and dr dt are quantities that I don't have, that I don't know anything about. So that's the problem, is that if I were to just, at this step, go, I can't plug anything in, any constants for vr and h, so let me just jump straight to the derivative, I should recognize I'm going to have a problem, because when I differentiate r, I'm going to need a dr dt, and I'm also going to need an r, and I don't know anything about those two quantities, r or dr dt. So this is not the correct method unless I were to be given uh, some information about r and dr dt, which may happen in a different problem. So for this problem, that method is not going to work. So here's what I have to do, and here's why I'm given the 4 and the 10. If you see what this figure says, by similar triangles, h over r, so I actually have two triangles here. Here's one, and I'm going to do the other one in a different color. Here's another one. So by similar triangles, I have this relationship that h to r, so h over r, is equal to 10 over 4. So the height over the radius, and then the height over the radius again. So I have this relationship, h over r equals 10 over 4. So what I really want to do is I want to get rid of 
this R. This R is a problem because it got me an R and a DRDT that I didn't know what to do with. So to replace this R, I have to rewrite R so it's in terms of the variable H. So I have, let me do it up here in the corner, I have H over R equals 10 over 4. So if I cross multiply here, I know that 4H equals 10R. And I want to solve for R so that I can replace this R with H's. So I'm going to divide both sides by 10. So the 10's will cancel. So R equals 2 over 5H. So now I can take 2 over 5H and substitute it into this R. So V equals 1 third pi. R is 2 over 5H squared H. So now this whole thing's in terms of h, so let's simplify it. I'm going to get 1 third pi, 2 fifths squared is going to give me 4 over 25, because I'm squaring 2 over 5, I have to square h, so h squared h. So my final volume formula is going to be 4 over 75 pi, so I'm multiplying 4 over 25 and 1 over 3 in pi, and then h cubed. So this is now the volume formula I would rather deal with than this one, because this one had the R, which was a problem, because it would give me a DRDT and an R that I have no information about whatsoever. But now I can differentiate this with respect to time. So DDT of V and DDT of 4 over 75 pi H cubed. So this is dv dt equals, if I take the derivative here, if I bring the 3 to the front, because um, I'm differentiating h cubed, I'm going to get 12 over 75 pi h squared dh dt. And now I want dh dt when h is 5. So I'm going to go ahead and plug 10 into dv dt. So 10 equals 12 over 75 pi h is 5, 5 squared dh dt, and I'm sorry I ran out of space, I'm going to try to fit it up here. So I'm solving for dh dt. So where I left off is I have, I'm going to multiply both sides, actually let's simplify this. This would be a 25, so the 25 and the 75 would cancel, this is just going to give me 12 over 3. 12 over 3 is 4 pi. So this is 10 equals 4 pi and then dh dt. So I just simplified. 5 squared was 25. 25 over 75 would give me 1 over 3. But now 12 over 3 is 4. So 4 pi is what's left, dh dt. So in other words, dh dt is 10 over 4 pi. My units, it's one unit of a volume. So it's going to be feet per minute. So 10 feet per minute is dh dt. So 10 over 4 pi feet per minute is the rate of change of the height. That's how fast the water level is rising at the moment the water level is 5 feet. So I do consider this to be a more challenging problem, but this is and has been in the past a free response question on the AP exam. So it's a question that I would expect you get in the habit of recognizing this trick of similar triangles. This is a geometry um, trick, and again, you know, you should sort of be trying to develop an eye for understanding why you would not want this R here. So now let's just take a look at part B. As time passes, what happens to the rate? at which the water level rises, and then explain. So this was part A, all of that was part A. So now part B is, is really just a conceptual understanding. So go back to thinking about this as a water cup, like the little sparklets water cup, and imagine pouring water into this. So the, the rate of change of the height of the water, when you first start pouring water into it, it fills up really fast because there's less volume to occupy at the base. So when you start pouring water into this, all of a sudden it pours really fast and then the height starts to slow down. So it just like shoots up and then starts to slow down as there's more volume to occupy as we get closer to the top. So as time passes, what happens to the rate at which the water level rises? The rate slows down. So the rate 
ends up slowing down. So that's the answer to part B. The rate slows down. Um, and the reason rate slows down because um, more volume to occupy. So as this cup starts to fill up, there ends up being more volume that I have to occupy. So the, the height, um, the rate of change of the height slows down. So first, dHgt fills up pretty fast. And then as we get to the top, um, the height increases, but slower. So the rate slows down because there's more volume to occupy. All right, example four. A person is tracking a rocket 10 kilometers away in vertical flight through a telescope. If when the angle theta is 60 degrees, the rate of change of the angle is 0.5 radians per minute, how fast is the rocket traveling? All right, so this picture would come along with um, the information. So a person, so here's the person on the ground, they're tracking a rocket that's 10 kilometers away. So the distance from the person to where the rocket was when it was about to launch is 10 kilometers. And the rocket is in vertical flight, and so he's looking at it through this telescope. So at the exact moment when the angle is 60 degrees, so when this angle theta is exactly 60 degrees, the rate of change of the angle, so the angle is of course going to be increasing as the rocket gets higher in the air, so the angle is changing. So the rate of change of the angle is 0.5 radians per minute. So at the exact moment when the angle is 60 degrees, how fast is the rocket traveling? So if the rocket started out on the ground, its height can be measured by this changing variable y. So here's what I'm given. I'm given the rate of change of the angle. We call it the angle theta. So I'm given d theta dt is 0.5 radians per minute. And I want to know how fast the rocket is traveling. So if I call this distance y, how fast y is changing is how fast the rocket's traveling. So I want dy dt when theta equals 60 degrees, at the moment when the angle is 60 degrees. So now I need a way to relate the variables. So the variable are theta and y, so theta being the angle, and y. Um, being this um, distance here. So notice I also was given the distance from the man to the base of the rocket was 10. So I have an angle, its opposite side, because this forms a right triangle, and its adjacent side. So the opposite over adjacent is the tangent function. So the um, function I'm going to use to relate the variables is tangent theta equals opposite. So the opposite is y over adjacent, so we could give this a variable name if we wanted to, but this is unchanging, so I would replace it with the unchanging quantity 10 anyways, so let's just put y over 10. So now, theta is changing, y is changing, now I could jump straight to taking the derivative with respect to time of both sides. So ddt of tangent theta, and then ddt, I'm going to rewrite y over 10 to be 1 tenth y. So now when I take the derivative of tan theta, the derivative is secant squared theta, d theta dt. And the derivative of 1 tenth y is just 1 tenth and then dy dt. So I'm interested in finding dy dt. So I need to substitute something in for <clears throat> theta and d theta dt. So secant squared theta is 60 degrees, d theta, whoops, that's supposed to say d theta dt, and it says d theta d theta, sorry about that, d theta dt is 0.5 radians per minute. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite that as 1 half. And then that has to equal 1 over 10 dy dt. So secant squared of 60 degrees, I'm going to rewrite that as 1 over cosine of 60 degrees quantity squared. And this is still times 1 half. And then what I'm going to do is multiply both sides of this by 10. So this is 
like 10 over cosine 60 degrees squared times 1 half. And that's going to equal dy dt. So the rest is a matter of simplifying. So this is 10 over cosine of 60 degrees, or this is like cosine of pi over 3, is 1 half squared. And then this is times 1 half. And this is dy dt. So 1 half squared times 1 half. So if I wanted to do this, one of the uh, 1 halves will cancel. So it's like 10 divided by a half, which is like 10 times 2 over 1. So this quantity is 20. So dy dt equals 20. And my units are going to have to be um, kilometers per minute. So if I think about the how fast the rocket's traveling, my units of distance were in kilometers, so I wouldn't want my answer to be in radians. Um, radians is a measurement of an angle, not of a distance. So my distance is going to have to be kilometers per minute. So dy dt, or the rate of change of the rocket, how fast the rocket's traveling, is 20 kilometers per minute. And if we think about that in a real world scenario, that makes sense. The rocket should be traveling pretty fast, so 20 kilometers per minute is pretty fast. All right, in example five, we're going to get to the class of problems that involve shadows. And a lot of students don't like these problems either. But I think they're not too bad once you understand what the problem is asking you for. So we have a six-foot-tall man that walks away from a lamp post that's 24 feet high at a rate of five miles per hour. So here's my stick figure drawing. I have this six-foot-tall man here. And he's walking away from a lamppost. So he is walking in this direction. Here's the lamppost. The lamppost is 24 feet high. And he's walking at a rate of 5 miles per hour. So this distance, so there's, there's three different distances going on here, x, z, and y. I'll explain why we need all three. So x is the distance from the light post to the man. So how fast this man is walking is equivalent to how fast the distance he is from the light post is changing. So in other words, what I've been given right here, this, this um, rate of 5 miles per hour that he's walking, this corresponds to dx dt. So the way that I've labeled it, x is the distance the man is from the light post. So how fast he's walking is the rate of change of his distance with respect to time. So what I've been given, dx dt equals 5 miles per hour. <clears throat> now let's look at these two questions. Part A, how fast is the end or the tip of his shadow moving? So this is kind of the difference in understanding um, what is the difference between the end or the tip of his shadow versus in part B, how fast is the shadow lengthening? So if you think about let's say it's dark and this light post is shining down on this man this portion that's been darkened here this is the man's shadow so we've given that a variable name of z so in part b how fast is the shadow lengthening we're asking in part b to find dz dt so that's what part b is asking find how fast the shadow is lengthening the shadow being z but that's different than part A that's asking how fast is the end or the tip of the shadow moving. The end or the tip of the shadow is actually dy dt, where y is this entire length. So from the, the base of the lamppost all the way to the very end or the tip of the shadow, we call that length y. So how fast is that moving? We would call that dy dt. And again, this is all just subjective to how you label it. So find dy dt because y is this entire length. So it's important to know the distance from the man to the light post, that distance x, dx dt, is how fast the man's walking. The shadow itself, if I take dz dt, if I call the shadow z, dz dt is how fast the shadow is lengthening, and y, the length of from the base of the lamppost all the way to the very end of the shadow, dy dt is how fast that tip of the shadow is moving. So it's all about understanding the different parts. So now I basically put our givens and our wants already in explaining the problem. So this is what I've been given. And, uh, these are what I want in each of the problems. So now let's focus on part A. 
So again, how fast is the tip or the end of the shadow moving? So I'm given uh, dx dt, and in this problem, I want to find dy dt. So I somehow need to relate um, x and y along with the other uh, quantities that I have here, which are 24 and 6. I need to somehow relate those two. So I actually have two triangles here, and I will draw them in different colors. So I have this triangle right here, and then I have this larger triangle here. So in all of these shadow problems, I am going to be using similar triangles. So those are two similar triangles. And let's try to write the relationship um, that involves only x's and y's, and then 24 and 6 somehow. So if this um, whole length here is y, and this distance here is x, well, I don't want to include z in part a because I have I don't have any information ab about z for part a. So instead, I want to think of this distance here only involving y and x. So it, this z could really be thought of as y minus x. So this whole length minus the distance traveled from the base of the lamppost. And the reason why I did that is so that I can use similar triangles right now and um, relate the side lengths. So this base, so I'm looking at the purple triangle, this base, y minus x, corresponds to the height of the man. So y minus x over 6 is equivalent to the base of the red triangle, which is y, to the height of the red triangle, which is 24. So I'm setting up similar triangles and ratios, so base to height and base to height. But I didn't want to use z is to 6 because I don't know anything about z in part a. So now that I have this relationship, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cross multiply so that I don't have any fractions. So 24 um, times y minus x equals 6y. So I have 24y minus 24x equals 6y. So what I'm going to do is subtract the 6y to this side, so I'd get 18y, and then I'm going to add the 24x to the other side. So now here's my equation that I would rather deal with. It's a little nicer to look at than this one. And now I, y is changing and x is changing with respect to time, so I can't put in any numbers there, so I jump straight to finding ddt of both sides. So ddt of 18y, ddt of 24x, and this is going to be 18 dy dt equals 24 dx dt when I take the derivative of both sides using implicit differentiation. And I was interested in finding in part a dy dt. So let's bring this up here because I ran out of space. So 18 dy dt, that's what I'm looking for, equals 24 and dx dt was 5. So 24 times 5. So now dy dt is 24 times 5 over 18, which simplifies to 20 over 3. And then we'll have to look at our units, which, whoops, I just caught something, and I'm so sorry about it. This should have been feet per second. I'm so sorry. From the beginning, right? I can't have my units be all mixed up. So we were talking about a 6-foot tall man, 24 feet high. Um, I want to keep my units of feet. So this should have been 5 feet per second, and then dx dt is 5 feet per second. So that now dy dt is 20 over 3, um, which is about 6 and 2 thirds feet per second. So I would have had to do unit conversion in miles per hour and feet per second, and that would have been unnecessary. So sorry, this should have been feet per second. And you won't ever have to do, it's a good time to talk about, any conversion of units. Um, that's not really what the AP test focuses on. The unit should all work out to be um, the same as what you're given versus what you're asked for. So that was the answer to part A. So now let's work on part B. So for part B, I needed some more space. So how fast is the shadow lengthening? We want dz dt. We are still going to use the same similar triangles, but I got rid of um, expressing z as y minus x because I want to include z now. Now somehow I want to only include um, z and dx dt. So now uh, 
using the similar triangles and the base height relationship, we are going to have z is to 6. So for part b, our ratios are going to be z corresponds to 6, and then this whole base is x plus z. So x plus z is to my height of 24. And so now we're going to cross multiply again. So we're going to get 24z equals 6x plus 6z. And then if we subtract the 6z to the other side, we're going to get 18z equals 6x. And then we differentiate both sides with respect to time. So ddt of 18z and ddt of 6x. So 18 dz dt and 6 dx dt is our derivative using implicit differentiation. And this time we're trying to find dz dt. So we'll have to bring it up here. So 18 dz dt equals 6, and my dx dt was 5. So I have 18 dz dt equals 30. So dz dt is going to be 30 over 18, which is going to reduce down to 5 over 3. And my units are going to be in feet per second again. So how fast is the, the shadow lengthening? Um, 5 over 3 feet per second. So that's how fast the, the shadow is um, getting longer as the man is walking further away from the light. All right, in this last example, example six, there's a very similar problem on a previous AP exam where instead of trains, we're dealing with ships. But this one, we have one train traveling west toward Denver at 120 miles per hour, while a second train travels north away from Denver at 90 miles per hour. So I'm going to stop and look at the image that's been given. So I'm going to go ahead and label um, my givens on the graph. So I'm told that one train is traveling west toward Denver at 120 miles per hour, and the second train is traveling north away from Denver at 90 miles per hour. So notice that this distance from the Denver station to the train traveling north has been called y. And this distance of y is going to be an increasing distance because the train is traveling north away from the Denver station. So when I've been giving, given 90 miles per hour, what I've really been given is dy dt. And it would be a positive quantity because y is getting bigger. So the rate of change of y is going to be a positive quantity. As opposed to this train that's traveling west, if I call this distance away from the Denver station x, x is getting smaller. So this quantity I've been given is dx dt, but it would in fact be a negative quantity because x is getting smaller. So at time t equals 0, the first train is 10 miles east and the second is 20 miles north of the Denver station. So this image corresponds to when time is 0, and the first train is 10 miles east. So this distance right here is 10 miles, so 10 miles east of the Denver station, and this train is 20 miles north of the Denver station. Calculate the rate at which the distance between the two trains is changing at time t equals 0. So I'm interested in finding the rate of change of L. So this variable, the distance between the two trains, is called L. And this should also look somewhat familiar to the very first example where I said that you left your house and your parents left your house at a particular time, and we wanted to know the rate of change between the two of you at a particular moment in time. So that's what we're doing in this problem. So here's what I want. I listed my givens on the graph, but what I want is dl dt at t equals 0. So I need a way to relate all of my variables. So my variables are x, y, and l, and this forms a perfect right triangle. So my formula is x squared plus y squared equals l squared. And each of the variables are changing. Each of those lengths are changing. So I can't replace them with constants. I just have to take the derivative with respect to x, or t, with time, on both sides. So d dt of x squared plus y squared and d dt of l squared. So I'm going to get 2x dx dt plus 2y dy dt equals 2l dl dt. And so since there's a 2 in everything, so on this left side I could factor out a 2, 
and then I could divide both sides by 2. So in other words, we can pretty much ignore the 2's altogether. So this is just x dx dt plus y dy dt equals l dl dt. And I want to find dl dt, that was the goal. So I need to plug something in for each of the other quantities. So x was 10, dx dt is negative 120, y is positive 20, dy dt is 90, and l is something I'm going to have to search for. So l at time 0 can be found using the Pythagorean theorem with the side lengths 10 and 20. So 10 squared plus 20 squared would give me the hypotenuse squared. So this is 100 plus 400. So this is 500 equals L squared. So if I take the square root of both sides and only consider the positive answer, L is the square root of 500. Whoops, the square root is what I meant to do. The square root of 500 and then DL DT. So now this is a matter of simplifying. So this is negative 1,200 plus 1,800 over the square root of 500. And that's dl dt. So I divided by the square root of 500. So this is 600 over the square root of 500. And what I'm going to do to determine the plausibility of my answer is plug this into my calculator. And I get 26, so I should put approximately, I get 26.8. 832. So whenever I <clears throat> use my calculator, I always want to go to the thousands place. And here I just truncated. So I just cut it off after th um, three places past the decimal. So 26.832 miles per hour would be DL DT.